This is Live Well Talk on Attention Deficit Disorder. I'm Dr. Dustin Arnold, Chief Medical Officer at UniPoint Health, St. Luke's Hospital. Join us today is UniPoint Health social worker and therapist, Christy Aquino. Attention Deficit Disorder, or ADD, or hyperactivity, uh, are on the rise in children. The American Psychiatric Association says that 5% of American children have, have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. But the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention puts the number at more than double that. So today we're going to discuss this and get some answers on this uh, concern that affects kids. My, you know, being an adult doctor, I don't have a lot of interaction with attention deficit disorder, of course, uh, or at least I don't re- recognize it. But I do remember one time I was just out of college, I mean, another buddy, we coached a little league team. And the Little League team started, you know, April into the school year. We had all these kids who were just great kids. And then, uh, you know, they took them off their ADD medications, uh, like at the end of the school year, it gave them a drug holiday. And we had, you know, a team of just utter monkeys uh, for the summer. And uh, it was a lot of fun, but it was very, very entertaining. So that's my only really interaction with this. So uh, just give me an overview of what is attention deficit disorder. Attention definite deficit disorder um, in kids is... A lot of times we see it when they can't sit still in the classroom, when they are having aggressive behaviors, um, a lot of different things that they display the behaviors. The one thing with ADD is sometimes it is also um, misdiagnosed as far as some kids who experience trauma um, can have the ADD symptoms. Some kids who have anxiety symptoms can also, or anxiety can also display the ADD symptoms. So it's really important that we work with the school. So a lot of times we see the kids come off of the medication and maybe at school they have a lot more structure and um, consistency in the classroom, but at home it's during the summer, it's not as structured. So we um, see them their behaviors maybe increase a little bit more of the the hyperness, the the lack of focus, and the inability to uh, complete tasks. Now, how is it diagnosed? I mean, so you mentioned anxiety. So if a, a child would present or a parent would present and ask me, hey, I think my child has hyperactivity uh, or attention deficit disorder. You, you had mentioned, I, I want to make sure the kid didn't have some sort of anxiety. So just walk me through the process of diagnosis. Um, well, it's really important that you get a lot of different parents get feedback from the classroom teacher, from coaches, from other people, maybe if they go to before or after school care, get feedback from all those people as to how the child is responding in those different environments. Because sometimes we um, see it in one environment, but we don't see it in other environments. In order to collect all the data, then we can, the, the provider um, that is seeing that child can actually make a real diagnosis diagnosis based upon where they're seeing the symptoms and what environments they're in. Can, can a child, first of all, let's, I, I know you specialize in children for the most part, but you do care for adults. Um, can an adult have attention deficit disorder? They can. They can. And I think we're seeing more maybe that there is some misdiagnosis of adults in in, um, in ADD and maybe there's some leading to the addiction phases and some of the, you know, um, eating disorders and that type of stuff with the ADD as well. Um, so yes, adults can have ADD. Because there is a potential for abuse of those medications that yeah. are controlled substances. How, 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 when do you always start medication? So you go to treatment. Is it okay? First line therapy is medication, or is it behavioral? What what, what is the first line therapy? So medication is good for kids. Um, however, the other pieces of that is the diet and exercise. Um, what kids put in their body directly affects their mental health. So as we um, are are observing the children, it's really important that we get them on a diet that has um, more fruits and vegetables and less uh, processed foods. Uh, the other side is the um, maybe they're missing vitamins and minerals in their in their diet. So uh, working with a provider to see if they maybe need to add more magnesium or zinc or um, iron or something of that nature into their in through a supplement versus maybe because maybe they're not getting it in their diet. Um, and then the exercise piece is just making sure that kids, you know, a lot of times kids are sitting in school all day long and then they're expected to, you know, sit a certain way, do a certain thing. And then we wonder why they are misbehaving or why we're seeing more behavior. So really getting them involved after school, even in um, maybe not as much team sports, but individual sports to start. Um, Maybe it's a swimming or tennis or um, something of that nature where they can actually exert the energy and get the endorphins going in their in their body um, that will help with the ADHD symptoms. Does chocolate cause hyperactivity in kids? <laughs> well, that's controversial. Okay. I'm, right. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think it does in me. So. Well, it, it, at least it tastes good. You know? Exactly.
Uh, how, how can, as a, as a parent, how could I get involved to help my child at home? It sounds like providing some structure, but I think also I look at the kids today, they're so busy compared to when I was a kid. You know, you, when I was a kid, you got up and it was just a race against the sunlight to do stuff. And that was your, that was your only sort of uh, uh, parameter that you follow. Now kids have club sports, it just goes on. What, 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 could, what can I do as a parent? Um, the structure is important, but then also being able to give them some downtime as well, um, that, that healthy balance of the two. The other thing that parents, a lot of times we have expectations for our kids. So it's, you know, follow this and do this and whatever, you know, our expectations are. So maybe figuring out with, with that particular child as to maybe you can't treat them the same way you treat your other children. Maybe they need um, more reminders and more prompts to get something done. Maybe they need... Um, um, a little bit more transition time or a little bit more structure. Maybe they need a visual schedule as to what the night's going to look like. Um, and and really going back to some of the things that m- maybe were implemented when they were younger and we they need depended on us more, um, implementing some of those types of things into their, their routine at home as well. Do you, do you think TV and social media has an influence on attention deficit uh, disorder? Yes, yes. We see a lot of kids who are on their tablets or they're in front of the TV and um, we can't, like the parents have a real struggle to get them away from the TV because they just, you know, that's where they are and that they're, they're engaged so much in the TV, then they're, they're unable to pull away from that and really be able to transition to a new event or a new task. Um, a lot of times parents also struggle with if my child isn't looking at me, they're not listening to me. So you'd be surprised when a child is um, if focused on the TV, they're probably hearing everything else that's going on in the background as well. But yes, TVs, tablets, gaming systems, all that type of stuff has a huge impact on on the ADD and ADHD symptoms. Yeah, at my age, I'm a little bit before the remote control generation, but mm-hmm. you know, certainly the remote control seems like that influences our... Uh, our attention span, especially for men, you know, oh, just yeah. constantly flipping through the channels. Mm-hmm. What are some benefits to therapy with uh, children? Uh, so we talked about the medicine. We talked about some structure. What else could we do for the child in 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 the, uh, from the standpoint of therapy? Um, getting them in with a therapist is important because we, as therapists, can work on the behavior aspect. We can help the parents with some of the frustrations and the struggles that they are facing on a daily basis of getting structure into the home. You know, sometimes it takes an outsider to see um, what's happening happening and being able to process through with the child even some of the things that are going on and how we can um, better manage those symptoms, whether it's at home or at school. Okay, so child seen, diagnosed, therapy starts, the structure, the medication starts. When do we take a look at not keeping them on a medication? I think there's always trepidation if uh, about placing a young person on a medication mm-hmm. because when do you stop? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts there? Um, I think that that's always an ongoing discussion with the provider and as well as getting feedback not um, from all those other people that are involved in the child's life as well. How is the child doing at home, at school, um, in sporting activities and um, all the structured stuff that they have in their lives? How is the child improving? What is the therapist seeing in the office? So I think, again, it's collaborating and getting that information from all those people that are involved in the child's life to determine what is in the child's best interest. Maybe it's working with the provider to wean them off of the medication, evaluate it, and then and then go from there. So is it safe to say it's a condition that one might grow out of? Some do. Some do. Some Just do. Just like other medical yep. conditions. Yep, some do. Well, Christy, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. This has been a great, great information, a topic that I'm not familiar with. Uh, again, that was Christy Aquino, a social worker and therapist with UniPoint Health. Thank you for listening to Live Well Talk On. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to spread the word, please give us a five-star review and tell your family, friends, neighbors, strangers about our podcast. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, or wherever you get your podcast. Until next time, be well.